Thank you, thank you very much, Pedro. And uh, many thanks, of course, to the C21 Editions Project for organizing the symposium and to UCC for hosting us. And special thanks, of course, to Dr. James O'Sullivan for all his uh, help. I've been very much looking forward to this uh, today, and I'm sure we are going to learn, we're already learning <laughs> much about our very challenging and multifaceted field. So, as we all know, this field and its establishment as a valid part of academic publishing um, has been in some times and in some places of the world, still is, a very long and gradual process. Um, so, I myself am currently at the very early stages of my dis dissertation, uh, making an effort to construct a history of the field, uh, especially how uh, digital publishing uh, has diffused uh, into the southern parts of Europe. Uh, so today my contribution is part of this e effort. Uh, what I propose with uh, this paper today is the importance of uh, a history of digital publication, uh, and important, the importance of uh, a historical perspective of the field. Uh, so that said, what I'm going to talk about today is how we can utilize the concept of smallness as a methodological marker in mapping and historicizing uh, digital publishing. So. Uh, in doing so, we'll try to present the current digital scholarly publishing field in Greece. And I will use a case study, the RCA's Digital Library, uh, based in Athens, and try to pinpoint its role in this field. So drawing from, from my personal experience editorially coordinating this project, uh, since its very beginning, back in 2018, I will attempt to present and analyze its activity in order to develop an example of smallness that could be juxtaposed uh, with a macro-historical level of digital publishing of the region. And my aim generally is to offer an alternative perspective into how ideas move that could be beneficial in informing future trajectories. So, about smallness, I borrow the concept of smallness from the field of international history and geopolitics, particularly from the problematic of small states that denotes the political and methodological dynamics arising from it, uh, in that it produces specific results when attributed as an identifying feature. Um, the concept here acts as a lens, let's say, through which to analyze digital publishing and which could destabilize the prevailing narrative regarding the origins and dissemination of digital technology. This narrative could be encapsulated in the notion that all technological uh, innovation emanates from specific centers, namely Western countries, such as the USA and the UK, and subsequently diffuses to the rest of the world. Uh, in this process, diffusion is usually assumed to be unilateral and uniform in all parts of the world, with certain receptor countries positioned as peripheries to these technological centers, tending to experience delays in adopting and assimilating such technologies due to, th to their perceived insufficient development. So this dominant narrative, I believe, shapes and limits our perceived points of reference in addressing challenges within digital scholarly publishing. And what I propose is that utilizing smallness in this context, and thus focusing on the small scale, uh, and different points of view, has the potential to allow actors perceived just as receptors some agency in forming the social uses and overall social shaping of technology. Uh, this draws, of course, upon the theoretical framework provided by global history, and in particularly the theory of circulation of knowledge, in that it helps examine how various actors across different regions of the world have sought to respond to the question of digital uh, publishing. So before moving on to our case study, uh, some words to give you just a sense of the Greek uh, publishing uh, uh, market. It is a relatively small market consisting uh, uh, mostly of uh, small or medium-sized family-owned businesses, albeit of course with a rich typographic past. Um, although the market was hit hard during the prolonged economic crisis of at least the last decade, in general, as Anna Karakatsuli has pointed out, one finds a reluctance toward digital transformation, either in terms of the hidden revolution, as described by J.B. Thompson, i.e. the integration of um, digital tools in the publishing workflow, or uh, the production of digital publishing, published uh, material per se. Um, the situation is similar in academic publishing, um, which appears divided between the commercial publishers and some institutional bodies, uh, mainly research centers and universities. However, there are some exceptions. 
The first one is the e-publishing project by the National Documentation Center, which is the national public uh, digital content aggregator in Greece. Um, the e-publishing project is implemented using the infrastructure of Open Journal System, you may be able to recognize by my little screenshots there, um, by the Public Knowledge Project. Um, so using this infrastructure, over the last few years, NBC has succeeded in acting as the main open access repository of digitized and digital scholarly publications in Greece, hosting material from many different uh, publishers, mainly academic institutions and research centers, but also some commercial houses, and providing services, services such as uh, metadata registration, DOI assignment, uh, facilitating dissemination and discoverability. So for the last decade, uh, NBC's e-publishing portal has been the reference point for open access scholarly publications for the Greek academic community across various di disciplines, as well as the national link to larger European coalitions for open scholarly communication, such as Oberas, Diamas, and Triple. The second exception is the National Technical University of Athens' digital textbook project named Kalipos. Uh, this project's main objective is to tackle the issue of high state costs in university textbooks. Um, yeah, so its team of 25 people collects manuscripts, manages a double peer review process, and publishes uh, digital publications in the form of PDF documents freely available via its repository. These two cases display pivotal um, steps toward establishing a, a, publishing, a digital academic publishing sector in Greece, articulating an agenda for open access, uh, while addressing issues of discoverability of academic material for research and education. Uh, nonetheless, neither has yet attempted to explore the implications arising from the transformation of traditional formats as they move into the digital realm. So monographs, uh, journals, proceedings, and university textbooks are mostly made available in uh, PDF documents, which directly mimic the format of the print book, while uh, the particularities of the book's design when set within a space of digital affordances do not appear to be a priority. Of course, given the relative absence of digital publishing in Greece, this is quite understandable. Uh, so on the other hand, our case study, the RCH Digital Library, uh, its focus and objective is similarly the open dissemination of original research, specifically in the fields of the humanities and social sciences. Um, this project is implemented by the Research Center for the Humanities, uh, a, re a respectively small non-profit organization with, whose main goal is the support of early career academics. Uh, alongside the publishing project per se, it has created an originally designed reading platform. Thus, it publishes as well as presents books, both online in an HTML format and in downloadable ready-to-print PDF format. So, as I'm going to show, uh, this project's distingu distinguishing quality is the willingness and priority given to experimentation. Since its conception, in parallel with publishing production, it has established a research strand. Uh, and with a small team from a variety of backgrounds, including digital humanities, art history, information science, and the traditional publishing sector, so far the experimentation has been centered around these two axes, the digital reading experience and the concept of openness. So regarding the first axis, the digital reading experience, as an academic publisher, uh, our publications are incorporated within the servers of the National Digital Content Aggregator uh, NDC's e-publishing project, but as I mentioned already, we have created also an original reading platform, so instead of relying on the NDC for the presentation apart from the dissemination of uh, our publications, we wanted to experiment on the conventions of the medium, asking the question, how do we read digitally? Therefore, apart from providing free access to original uh, scholarly content, this platform also proposes an approach to the digital reading experience. Uh, this was steered by a common experience amongst the team, which was what we consider as digital publications, as I mentioned earlier, earlier uh, particularly as we encounter them in the Greek linguistic region of the web, uh, would appear as a plain PDF, uh, in most cases identical to the ones that would be printed to bind a physical book. 
On the other hand, the ones that would, uh, would be available on, in an online uh, HTML format appeared not to give so much attention to typography or aesthetics, one of the main advantages that the print lover would identify about print books. Um, so the team set off trying to find the right balance between enriching uh, publications with functionalities that digital technology offers, while leveraging the knowledge amassed from the book's past. Uh, so naturally it would not suffice to create a yet another imitation of the book, but what could be done, paraphrasing Jonah Drucker, would be considering not how a print book looks, but how it works. So, uh, I don't have the time to include all aspects of these considerations, so I will mention some main ones. Uh, for example, a main given was that the structure of the cultural and technological object that is the physical book is a result of historical and social habits that should be taken into account in the effort of producing an equivalent ease of use to its digital continuation. So, that means taking advantage of the new medium and its immense underutilized possibilities does not mean that we should altogether ignore the social meaning attached to the paradigmatic medium of knowledge organization used for studying, reading, and researching for centuries. Um, so, for example, the aesthetics of typography, uh, its conventions and formulation of the text, do not only pertain to visually pleasing results, but also functional value. Uh, consequently, there was much contemplation on ways to enrich publications with hypertext, multimedia, inter and interactive functionalities without creating distractions for reading and paying much attention to avoid the urge to click, as Anne Magin has uh, described it. I believe we achieved that to an extent by keeping design plain, clean, with minimal differentiations on colors and other indicators of additional affordances, trusting the reader slash user to unfold her own experience and familiarity with the platform. In addition, special attention was given, of course, to typography and fonts, uh, and font selection resulted from extensive research uh, on the Greek typographic past and was shaped into a more minimal approach to traditional serif fonts. Regarding the second axis of experimentation and research, openness, uh, another arduous discussion emerging frequently um, throughout the project it, um, involved the HTML or PDF dilemma, to paraphrase J.B. Thompson. Um, indeed, the coexistence of two different final files, i.e. two different final copies, resulted in almost double the work for proofreading, typesetting, as well as archiving and digital asset management. Even so, the team opted to keep both, and I think the gain of this double effort was twofold. Uh, on one hand, the PDF is more widely accepted as a form of um, digital publications by international academic standards. Again, social context directly affects the limits of uh, experimentation. Uh, furthermore, this format also serves the need to download text locally, allowing the researcher to store the publication on her device and work with it offline on her own time. On the other hand, of course, HTML allows for a radical level of, um, in, of openness in access and accessibility. It ensures inter interoperability across all operating systems and devices, as it is possible to use on any kind of device, even a public computer, just with an internet connection and a browser, without requiring high specifications or even storage availability. Uh, lastly, by using a semantic language like HTML5, we laid the foundation for the addition of accessibility functionalities, especially for people with visual disabilities, as the publication is ready for text-to-voice recognition. Finally, another important feature, decisive for this project's openness, uh, is its provision of uh, complementing the Greek text with extended abstracts in English, rendering research open and available to require to, to further cultivate uh, discussion, not only regionally, but also internationally. Uh, already we have started seeing some results on this front, as many of our researchers uh, have formed collaborations with colleagues uh, in Europe and Canada. Uh, and besides, this project's identity as a library uh, denotes the aspiration to serve the social function of their library to bring, by bringing together uh, through organizing workshops, seminars, and other events um, related to research published, and caring to foster a dialogue between researchers, constituting a space for the formation of various research networks. 
So having outlined this project's aims and priorities, I believe the concept of smallness plays a critical heuristic role in conceptualizing how transfers and flows of ideas take place in the digital publishing field. Uh, in the case of this specific project uh, within this specific context, smallness and independency from any larger scale coalitions allowed the RCH team to set its own set of priorities without being limited by larger bodies' policies and subsequently addressing themes on an academic level that have not yet been the priority uh, in relevant uh, research in Greece. Evidently, though, smallness has its own shortcomings, shortcomings uh, in terms of uh, limited economic, technological, and of course human capital, which result in small volume or slow rate of production. Uh, however, seeking to counter these limitations um, steered us toward forming collaboration with um, peers, uh, which of course resulted in uh, knowledge exchange. Uh, for example, on the regional level, the collaboration with a large organization like NDC ensured the, pr the project distribution and discoverability, as well as ed educated the team regarding adherence to all standardized processes of the digital publishing workflow. Uh, at the same time, this collaboration, of course, with a large public institution advanced our smaller project um, symbolic capital and prestige. Uh, the NDC, in turn, uh, appreciates and encourages the experimental character of uh, the smaller project and appears open to further the collaboration on the re-examination of digital reading conventions, even if often hampered by bureaucratic obstacles. Uh, lastly, the overall independence of our project um, regarding research questions allowed us to open the dialogue with institutions abroad that had similar research interests. Uh, overall, I believe the case of the RCH Digital Library constitutes a prime example of a reference point in terms of smallness in how it concentrates the dynamics of interaction between the small and large scale that formulate the diffusion and transfer of ideas in digital scholarly publishing and which could be applied, I think, on the international scale too. Uh, I believe the analysis of these uh, regional and intra-regional interactions where differences in priorities and capital configure vague or more explicit power structures but nonetheless encourage the interchange of ideas offers an alternative way to think about digital technologies and their diffusion that moves beyond the notion of one-way diffusion. In parallel, uh, this perspective advocates for a shift towards a view that uh, considers digital publishing not only a set of technological tools in the field of innovation, which of course it is, but also as a part of a historical process. Uh, consequently, digital publishing should be considered as a latest milestone in the long history of academic publication, a continuation of a set of a social, economic and cultural practices pertaining to the task of scholarly communication, which are influenced, of course, by a series of contextual factors. Um, the small sp scale perspective here allows us to examine the processes of diffusion in a way that enables us to clearly distinguish the particularities that may present in different regions and our communities. Finally, in a broader view, this approach uh, also enables us to move beyond the narrative of the supposed neutrality or universality of digital technology. Uh, in the era of platform capitalism and artificial in intelligence, the digital divide has made evident that although technology is presented with these claims, it is never created or addressed to everyone and is by no means one size fits all. So the global village of the internet that could be interpreted as a key example of the form of globalization that Lynn Hunt describes as top-down, which is a series of processes that could result in the complete homogenization of the world in the Western paradigm. But in contrast, the methodology presented here adopts the alternative perspective on globalization, which is suggested by Hunt, rather than a gradual transformation of the rest of the world to fit into the Western paradigm. It explores the dynamics of diffusion as a series of transnational, decentralized histories of different actors, intertwining and interdependent. Thus, we should be able to inform our ever-changing and still very fluid field into a more inclusive and diverse approach. Thank you.